Hey folks, it's Dave here in Studio C looking at Shootout Hockey. Yep, one of my favorite hockey games to play. In fact, it was one of my first cards and dice games ever to play. Probably that's why it's so near and dear to my heart. And you can find this game at shootouthockeygame.com. Shootouthockeygame.com is the website. You can go here and you can read a little bit about the game. You get some headlines of the new teams that were released. You scroll down, you find out uh, how many seasons are available, the prices and the whole bit. So shootouthockeygame.com is where you can go to find out more about this game. I thought I'd do a couple of short videos about this game, just talking about some things I've learned over the last year of playing this game, and just share it with people. Uh, today I want to talk about the team cards and assists, is what I'm going to focus on today. And, and again, I might introduce some of the uh, the ways I play this game, which are a little bit different than the actual rules, but um, as we go along, I'll explain a little bit more about that. So the first thing I like about this is the colors. Look at all the colors here. They're just really nice. You get the team name, the team colors. Underneath, you got the year that they're played. So that might say the year, it might say the decade set, or the greatest teams, whatever you bought, it'll say it right here. Uh, you get your home and away ratings. One more, I'll, I'll talk about that in one second. Then you got the, the players. Forwards are grouped by lines, one, two, three, and four. Defense, one, two, three. And then you got your bench players. Some teams have reserves, and there's a reserves chart that comes with the season you bought. So if you were to roll an N for a scoring chance or a V for a penalty, you would go to the reserves chart, and you'd get some of the guys that didn't play so much, some points or penalties. When I do a replay, though, if I, especially if I'm just doing playoffs, I tend to go with the guys in the card, and I tend to ignore bench and reserve players because I figure they're not going to play much in playoffs. That's just how I do it. So let's dive in a little bit more. Oh, and uh, goalies, too. As you can see here, that um, uh, for the North Stars, Maniago, Rivard, and then others. So they have a reserves table for goalies. So that means Minnesota had more than a couple of goalies playing on their team and guys that might have played one or two games. But if you wanted to, you could get, get them some action here in the game. All right, so let's go right down here. So let's start with the home rating and the away rating. This is your offense, and this is one of my... Oh, this is a hockey stick, by the way. Yes, it is. This is one of my favorite things about this game is that there's a little variation with home and away, usually. Some teams are given a direct letter. And like, for example, here, uh, Oakland, they're going to be G away no matter what, okay? But most teams have a little variation. So you roll a six-sided dice... One to five, Pittsburgh will be E rating at home. The six will be an F rating at home. Obviously, the lower the letter, the better. Okay, on the road, they're either F or G. If you roll a one, you get an F. Two through six, they're a G, and so on. So I do like that um, the offense is not set in stone, usually that there's a little variation in that. And that comes in handy like when you're playing a seven-game series, too, because sometimes they bring it and sometimes they don't. Getting on to the skaters, you see they're all grouped here, as we talked about. And then you talk about their positions, uh, left wing, center, and right wing, down in order. And then the, the defense, obviously, left D and right D. The next column is your scoring chances. So if you roll or flip a card and you get a scoring chance for that team, then you flip to see who gets a scoring chance or roll to get who gets a scoring chance. Some players have two letters. Some some even have three letters. That means they get a lot more scoring chances than others, and that's how this game actually works. So if you were to roll or uh, uh, get an A, it's Prentice, or a Q, it's Prentice. If you get an F, it was going to be Hextall and so on. So scoring chances determine who's going to take the shot. If the shot is a goal, then you need to find the assists, okay? And we'll do assists in one second, okay? Here is your assist column. I'll go with that in one second, and I'll also talk about penalties in one second. Let's get on to goalies here real quick, though. For goalies, you have starting probability, their defensive rating, their rebound, and then their save. So how this works is, if uh, and this is one of the things that I learned early on, because I didn't know what this meant, but I learned, and now I, I'm getting good at it, is uh, Al Smith, if you roll two dice, and it's 42 or less on that roll, Smith starts the game. If it's 43 to 61, then Binkley's going to go into the net. And if it's 62 to 66, then Daly will be the goalie. Same thing over here. Perrant will go on a roll of 11 to 55, Favelle will go a roll of 56 to 66. So if you want, you can roll the dice to get a random goalie. Obviously, the, the top goalies will play more. Or you can just pick a goalie. Like You might say, look, I, I'm doing a series right now where Al Smith lost a couple of playoff games, so I put Binkley in. So Binkley, let's see how you can do for me. Just mixes it up, and it's fun for me. On the uh, goalie defensive rating, okay, this so you get the offensive rating. Well, now you get a defensive rating. So if you roll the dice, one, two, or three, 
Al Smith would be a D-level goalie for that night. If you roll a 4 or 5 or 6, well, he's going to be a little bit uh, worse, so he'll be an E. And Binkley over here, Binkley needs to roll a 1 on a 1 to 6 roll, otherwise he'll be an E. And Daly, he gets 1 to 4, being a D, 5 and 6 being an E, okay? So what you would do is, after you determine your home or away offensive rating, you would compare it to the goalie. So let's just say Pittsburgh was away, and they were a G, and they were playing over here against Perrant, who was a D. So you look G and D on the chart, and that would give you a number. Let's just say that was 11 to 15 or whatever it is, and that would be their offensive scoring chance rating for the game. Over here, if you were Philadelphia, they were home. Let's just say that you rolled a 2. So they are an E offense. They were going against Smith, who was a D. It would be E against D for Philadelphia, and it would be something like 56 to 66 on the dice roll. So that's how you would set up uh, the offense and the defense. And I do like that about this game, how there's a little variation with the goalies and the players. Not always. Sometimes a goalie is, is locked in with a number, and sometimes the offense is locked in with a number. But more, more than not, you're going to get a little bit of um, uh, a variation here. And I do like that because it's not set in stone. So let's go to assists, okay? So say the score is a goal. So he's on the third line. And how I do it is I lock in the third line on the ice. Okay, that third line is locked in. So if I uh, roll the dice or do a card, let's say do a fast action card, and it says your offensive line and your defensive line. So it's two and two. Well, we know that line three is locked in on offense, so I'm going to disregard L2 and go to D2. That's my defensive line. So if I draw this card, say the scores, line three is out there with defensive line two is how you read that. Same with this card. It says offensive line one, defensive line two. What well, we're going to ignore the offense because Seda's on line three. So it's line three and defensive line two again. That's how I do that. So you need to determine who's on the ice first. So again, that's why when you flip the card, you have the three lines across. So it tells you who's on the ice and then you get to two assists. Okay. Sometimes assists are easy. You draw a card and it says right D or it says center. So it's simple enough. So, if Sather scored, and I got the second line right, D, Watson, okay? I flip another card, and it says the center, so Ron Shock. So, Sather from Watson and Shock is how I would score that on my assist chart. There's a few wrinkles in here as well. You can get an R5, okay, on the cards or on the dice. And you can see there's a couple guys here with R5, 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 R5. But what that does is that just gives them an extra chance to get an assist because they had more assists than the normal players. So for a guy like um, uh, this guy right here, Boyer, okay, he can only get an assist if his line scores and it calls for the center, okay? Uh, but if over here, if Keenan scores and you get, you roll a uh, R5 or 6, well, that gives him extra chance for an assist. So R5... Berenson gets the assist. The same with a six. If you pick up a six, okay, so if say it scores and you say, okay, it's a six, well, Shock automatically gets that assist because he's got the six. So Shock can get an assist on center and Shock can get an assist on a six, okay? So again, just to recap, pull your card. If the defenseman scores, so let's just say that Watson scored, well, you don't need to determine the defense, you need to determine the offense. So Watson scores. It's defensive line two, offensive line one, and now I can determine your assist. So we're going to roll, get our first assist, flip, get our second assist. The other thing in here is line, okay? If you get line, it means everybody on that line gets an assist. Now, how I do it is if Sailor were to score again, and I draw this line thing, even though I've already found out that Watson got an assist as the defenseman, if I draw a line, I cancel out his assist, and I give it to all the forwards. So Sailor, Shock and Harbrook would get the uh, the, the assist on the say the goal if I did line. So say the scores, Shock and Harbrook, because the entire line gets it. Conversely, if Watson scores and he gets the line, then his defensive partner, Rupp, is going to get an assist along with whoever else gets one. So that's how the line comes into play. The only thing that changes is this XL, okay? So if Boyer were to score and you draw the line, XL means, nope, you do not get an assist if the line comes into play, because this guy did not get a lot of assists. And usually it's on the bottom guys. As you can see, it's, you know, the defensive guys, defensive guys, line four, defensive guys. So the XL really comes into play on guys that didn't get a lot of assists. So if you happen to draw the full line, everyone gets one except for the guy in XL. So it's basically it says, do not give one on the line. And the last thing here is the all, as you can see. So 
if uh, Tim Ecclestone scored for the Blues, no matter what, Goyet gets an assist, okay? And if Roberts scored here, no matter what, Marcel gets an assist. So all supersedes everything. So if somebody on, on the line three scores, automatic assist. Line two scores, automatic assist with the all. So that's how the all works. Now, some people ask about no assists. Well, let's just say that this happens right here, okay? So let's just say, say their scores. And we determine that as line three forwards and line two defense. And I flip my card or I roll my dice and it's a left wing for the first check. Well, left wing is Sather. So Sather cannot get a uh, an assist on his own goal, so we scratch that. Then we go to the next card. Oh, left wing again. Well, so... Sather is going to get this goal unassisted because I flipped two cards, both said left wing, so it's going to be Sather unassisted. So that's kind of how I do that on the assists. Other people might do it differently, but that's what I do. So that's what some of the symbols mean here as far as the sixes and the R5s and the XLs and the alls and the whole bit. Hopefully I explained that okay. Let's move on to penalties real quick, at least the, the penalty column here. I'll do a separate video on penalties. How it happens with penalties is you would flip a card or uh, roll the dice for a minor penalty A, V and Z2. So you look on the card here and find the Vs and the Z2. So we have a V here, a V here, and a V here. Okay, now the X2 is different than X, as you can see. We have X2 and we have X. And also we have Zs and Z3s. We also have Z2s. We have Ys. And we have Y2. So keep that in mind that X and X2 are different. Y and Y2, they're all different. Okay, so you can have a, a, an X, an X2. You can have a, a Z, a Z2, a Z3. They're all different. Okay, now this number here, this last number, this is your fight rating. And it's in this last column all by itself. So St. Louis has a 3, 4, and 5 on a fight rating. Pittsburgh, a 4 and a 5. And Philadelphia has 1, 2, and 5. So if you were to draw a major penalty, 5 for fighting, it would be player 1 versus player 1. So Fleming is a 1, but he's got nobody to fight over here. I'll go over penalties later. So that's how you would determine who got into the fight, is this column here. So as you can see, we have X2 with a 5. The 5 is separate, okay? Just like we have Z3 with a 4. The 4 is separate. So you can have a Z3 with a 4, or you can have a Y2 with a nothing. So again, this last column is for fighting rating, and it's a smaller number. So a lot of people got confused with that, but you can have a plain X or an X2. They're very different. So if you were to draw this card here again, X, it, this guy gets a penalty. This guy does not. It has to be X2. And also Y, so... Y2 gets a penalty, because that's Y2, but this Y is just a plain Y. He does not. So the penalties here, pay real close attention to that. Keep in mind that you have a, a separate column here for fights, and you, would, you just ignore this number over here unless you're looking at a major penalty for fighting. But again, keep in mind that uh, X2 is different than X, Z3 is different than, than Z, and the whole bit. So that's how you check for penalties. So uh, that'll wrap up this video here. I'll get into some more shootout hockey coming up, but I wanted to do this one here today. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, um, and I'll talk to everybody later. Bye-bye.